guys, the video you're about to watch will definitely bless you. Please watch this video to the end. Please click on the subscribe button. Please share our videos and please turn on your notification bell so when we post new videos, you will definitely get our last for them. Thank you and enjoy your video. There are consequences to prolonged situations, prolonged calamities. Let me your attention now, please. There are consequences. I'll list a few of them for you. These, anybody you see in any prolonged situation, that person most likely has these mountains to overcome. It's important for you to know that so that you will appreciate this story that the Bible tells us. When you read it, it just looks like the man was seated and then he came and was healed. But there's a lot and the Lord is helping us unpack the layers of light that we need to see from this. It is impossible, many of you know that the moment a child gets to an age of discretion and realizes that there is such a child's life, the first thing that happens is low self-esteem immediately while other kids are playing you cannot play and other nasty sometimes ill-trained kids will come and call him all kinds of names are we together that guy who cannot walk and they laugh and he will go back and ask his mother why can't i walk or run like other children there are results to prolonged calamities there are results to prolonged problems low self-esteem anger resentment hatred wrong perceptions about god and men let me list them for you again never downplay the effect of staying for a long time in a negative situation number one low self-esteem our world has been plagued by this sad cancer of low self-esteem Perhaps persons well-intentioned who did not come from families with the best of experience, regions with the best of experience. Low self-esteem, anger, resentment, hatred. It seems very justifiable to hate God and hate men. When you find out that you were not given a chance, ladies and gentlemen, please put yourself in the shoes of this man and come for koinonia say or any meeting for that matter then hear a man of god dancing and saying things like i was young and now i am old i have never seen the righteous forsaken you would almost want to stone that man of god and say come and see one righteous man who looks forsaken are we together there are times that you see a lot of people in church while other people are shouting amen, they don't shout amen. They are, not, they are not necessarily angry at the preacher. The conflict between what the preacher is saying and the reality of what is happening in their lives is too wide. On one hand, they cannot say God is unfaithful. But on the other hand, they cannot understand why an innocent man, if it is true that children are a heritage from the Lord, where was God when that boy was formed in the womb of his mother? Where was Jeremiah 1 and verse 5? That before thou camest forth, I ordained you to be a prophet. What happened to my own ordination that I was born crippled? There are many things about God that if you are not taught, and you have to look through the lens of your pain, it will not make sense. This is the reason why you need a teaching priest to help you bring to perspective many spiritual things. How do you explain a man who lost his job? My God, I'm sensing the power of God very strongly here. How do you explain a man who on account of his righteousness lost his job? Where was God? The God of the three Hebrew boys. How many of you know that there are people who entered their own fire and the fire burns them? Hey, the fire burnt them till they died. There are people who enter the lion's den. I mean a literal lion's den from church history. It, what happened to Daniel didn't happen to them. Oh. The lions ate them up. They came out. They had them shouting in that cave. And then you tell me that God is a God of love. And then you tell me that God has great plans for me. You dare to quote the scripture. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, that they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. What expected end? 
that I was not even given a chance to fail. I was not given a chance to disobey. I was not given a chance to insult God. Rise up and walk. Is someone learning? There are results oh, to prolonged calamities. There are times I've had the honor of praying for very sick people and sick people who have been sick for a long time. And while their family members may be rejoicing that they finally gotten my attention, either to pray on phone or to minister to the person, sometimes you see some level of joy from the people because they can almost guarantee that healing has come. While I'm speaking, sometimes I need to ask the sick person, are you there? The person does not say amen. It's not unbelief. It's what pain can do. Are we together? My friend, I'm ready to pray for you in Jesus' name. And someone is shouting amen and they even be begin to clap. And the person who is sick is, please pray. And very soon you will find out that you are at least the 25th or 26th anointed man praying. Not the first, not the fifth, not the tenth. They are, they are tired of their expectations being disappointed. By the time you come as number 26, and while you are giving them all kinds of arrogant testimonies, it was just last week I raised someone from a wheelchair. They say, please pray and leave this place. Let the doctors do their best until I die. Carry all this your Pentecostal gibberish and walk out of this hospital. Hmm. This is the reason why everyone must join me in praying this prayer tonight. Satisfy me early with your mercy. Something happens to you when pain becomes prolonged. You no longer see the possibility of God's faithfulness. Something happens to you when poverty, when sickness, when infirmities prolong. Someone say, satisfy me early. The first miracle that happened to this man was not his healing. The first miracle that happened to this man, please give us verse 2. The Bible says a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried. Everybody say was carried. My goodness. That doesn't look like a miracle till you hear me for a minute or two. The first miracle that happened to him was not his healing. But that certain man, watch this. They believed in him enough to carry him and lay him daily. Daily, not weekly. Have you ever attended to a sick person? There are times that even as a loved one of that sick person, you honestly get tired and weary. It is a miracle when men believe in you indefinitely, when there are no results yet in your life. It's a real miracle. The Bible says certain men, he was carried, whom they laid daily. What is the first miracle? That certain men believed in him enough to carry him and lay him daily. Daily. Now, connected to that miracle, still the first miracle, was where they laid him at. The Bible says they laid him at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. <laughs> they laid him at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. Listen to me. Do you know what that means? Now, I've studied that beautiful gate concept. It was beautiful. The word beautiful gate came there because other materials within the temple were made of gold and silver. But that particular gate was made of bronze. But the bronze was so polished. In fact, it was called Corinthian bronze. It was so polished to an extent that when light came, it glowed and illuminated even more than the other doors. Beautiful gate. They laid him there and the miracle started happening to his perception. There was something he saw at that gate he could not see where he was coming from there was something that he saw at that gate he could not afford to see in his house it mattered that what he was seeing was beautiful even though his life was ugly beautiful gate is someone learning the first miracle was that certain men believed in him believed in him enough to carry him and lay him daily at a place which could start correcting his perception and building his faith. This was what they did. Those men helped him. They were the original foundation 
When you hear rise up and walk, you credit it to Peter and to John. But I'm telling you, you are wrong. The first sponsors of those miracles were nameless, faceless, divine connectors and burden bearers. No name, but their impact could not be denied. When you receive a healing, it's easy to be credited to God through Joshua Selman. But the nameless person who told you, come for koinonia, the nameless person who said, are you going for koinonia? Can I give you a lift? You don't even know the name of the person. The greatest miracles we celebrate are not usually the first to happen. There is always a build up of a foundation. When you celebrate a great, I don't know anybody who claps for foundations. We clap for buildings. This beautiful building is suspended from a very solid foundation. See that now? I know you celebrate the job, but how about the one who told you don't give up? Try applying one last time. The Bible says men who took him daily. Someone say daily. daily. The miracle is in their refusing to be tired. That they carried the fact that they carried him daily. Men, they returned him back at night. He would not be left there every day. Why are you wasting your time speaking to my destiny? I'm already a failure. And mama says, not that. You are my son. If it would take 20 years, I will know one day, God will raise a preacher to speak to you. Let me tell you, when you are clapping for me, make sure you clap for her too. God use both of us. It is amazing the amount of silent people who have played mysterious roles in our lives that may never be seen, may never be congratulated. They are not enlightened enough to be recognized and honored yet today we stand upon the foundation of those people remember the one who woke you up every night you were angry but you still went for the devotion today you are a pastor are we together remember your uncle who told you by 4 p.m return home you are still a child you said i'm 13 years he said go out of my house then if you feel you can make it on your own once you are under my care return home by evening that's the reason why you're a good father today you would have been a careless person roaming around around but someone planted that seed it was while you sat in one place that you had the opportunity to read a book that began to culture your mindset we owe those nameless people who refuse to be tired what if a night before the man's miracle the man said we have tried you too, you know we have tried. Tomorrow we will not be around. Their consistency is what made the apostle to be able to look at him. Hmm. Is someone learning? I hope you've not forgotten what we are discussing. Rise up and walk. I'm showing you how to access extraordinary dimensions. These are just observations we are bringing out of that story. So the first miracle that happened to this man, still on point five, was that certain men believed in him. I've taught you that there are four kinds of destiny helpers. Can I recap for one minute? That in your life, as far as the ministry of men is concerned, you will encounter four kinds of destiny helpers. Number one, they are called divine connectors. These men served as divine connectors. They didn't have the power to heal the man but they were able to help him and take him where he could be healed. Number two, men of influence. These are the second groups of divine, of destiny helpers, men of influence. They have the credibility, they have the track record to be able to recommend you. Their names are keys. They can open doors and gates for you. Number three, gifted men. You need gifted people. They will close leakages and wastages from your life, your organization. One gifted man can have the strength of 50 people. Number four, burden bearers. I've taught you that burden bearers don't have the power to move you forward. Their assignment is to stop you from going backward. These are men who love you regardless. They don't love you because you are a preacher. They don't love you because you are CEO. They love you sincerely that even when the crown is not on your head, they are still there. Even when you do not have the garment as Jesus, they are still there. May you find such men in your life. If you are surrounded by only people who celebrate the crown, the scepter, or the throne, you will be in trouble. Because the day your crown is not there. These are the three things that make a king. His crown, his scepter, and his throne. 
But there are times, even if you are Jesus, you will have to give up that crown, give up that throne, give up that scepter, and become a man. At such points, may God give you burden bearers. Remember another incident of burden bearers? The men who tore the zinc and brought another crippled man. They insisted that they wanted this man to be healed. And on hearing that Jesus was organizing a conference, there was no way they could come in because of the crowd. And the Bible says they literally tore the roof and brought that man in. In other words, whatever consequence, let it be on us. And Jesus said when he saw their faith, one thing we learn from that scripture is the man who was crippled never spoke. All those who did the speaking were his friends. The man who needed the miracle himself was quiet. That there are men who can stand up and take your matter on their head until you smile. May God bring such people to your life. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready to see the second miracle that happened? All right, so number two. The second miracle, I hope I've not lost you. We're still discussing the fifth observation. And at under point five, one or A if you want, the first miracle was the willingness of certain men to believe in him enough to carry him and to lay him daily without getting tired, without expressing their anger or exhaustion, and that they placed him at the gate beautiful, a place that could begin to alter and correct his perception. How many of you know that when you are kept close to a gate and you don't have the power to move, you are forced to keep seeing? It's not that he had the liberty to rest, he would sleep and wake up and all that was before him was the gate. And if you think what you see does not matter, ask the cattle that Jacob reared in Laban's house. What led to their multiplication, their change of state? Something they saw. Are we learning? The second miracle was the ability for that man. This is where we give the crippled man credit. The second miracle was the ability to look beyond his pain. The ability to look beyond his legitimate resentments and to humble himself to be carried. The second miracle that happened there was the ability for that man to look beyond his pain and to allow himself to be carried every day. It's one thing to want to carry the man, but the man had the power to say, I'm tired of this mockery. He would have called that help mockery. It takes a lot of humility to look beyond your pain, especially because we live in a world where we hate drawing sympathy. Nobody wants to be told, hey, yeah, it's not sorry, eh? Do you think they just carried him silently? I'm sure one day they would carry him what if the man wanted to use the toilet? What if the man wanted to take his bath? It would look like mockery, but they had to carry him. The humility to look beyond his pain, legitimate anger and resentment, and allow himself to be carried. That was the second miracle. Is someone learning? It takes a lot of humility. A scripture is coming to my mind. Thank you, Jesus. What scripture is that now? Help us. Luke 16. I think that's Luke 16. A parable that Jesus gave about an arrogant man who was ashamed to beg. Look for it. Look either verse 1, 2 or 3. Media help me. Luke chapter 16. Yes. Watch this. Just the first three or four verses. And he said, please let me have your attention. On to the disciples. Jesus now. There was a certain rich man which had a steward. He had a what? Steward, a caretaker. And the same man was accused that he had wasted his goods. So the steward of the rich man was a careless man. Verse 2. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship. He said, For thou mayest be no longer a steward. I'm going to fire you. Watch what the man said. Verse 3. Beautiful. This is what I'm looking for. Then the steward said within himself, are you seeing pride now? What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me stewardship. I cannot dig and to beg I am ashamed. There are people like this. Give us NIV, verse 3. NIV please, or amplified anyone. The manager said to himself, what shall I do now? My master is taking away my job. Watch this. <laughs> I am not strong enough to dig. And I am ashamed to beg. May you not be like this. That a man can lack capacity. And yet even where help can be offered. He said I am ashamed. 
It's a miracle when you find a man who is humble enough to be carried. There are people today, if only they have the opportunity and the humility to ask, please, God is helping me, but I have a situation right now with my house rent. I am not careless. Can mercy be shown me? Shame can be taken away with one alert, but they can remain there, punish their wives, punish their children, punish everybody. I'm too big to beg. I know what to do. There are people who are too big to be prayed for. There are people who are too big to be counseled. It's a miracle when a man becomes humble enough to be carried every day. Maybe once a while, that's all, all right. But every day, it is extreme humility to not only carry a man, but that the man allows himself to be carried. Can you allow yourself to be carried on the wings of prophecy? One day you'll be able to walk, but while you are still leprous, can you allow, even if you are Moses, you'll be carried for a while. Even if you are Jesus, you'll be carried for a while. One day you will save the world, but not as a baby. While you are a baby, Herod can kill you. Allow Joseph and Mary to carry you to the place of safety. Moses, you are born a deliverer, but not as a baby. Look left and right and you will see the dead corpses of children that have been wasted because they are searching for you. If help comes while you are rising, don't reject it. Did you hear what I said? If help comes while you are rising, please don't reject it. When you find genuine help, don't reject it. If I were that man, I don't know how many times my ego will be stung. But one thing I know I would have obtained grace to do was to say thank you every day. That while these men carry me on the way to the gate beautiful, I would say gentlemen, I do not take your generosity for granted. I don't have the power to help myself, but thank you. At a point, they'll be tired and say, don't stop saying thank you every day. But I will reply by telling them, for as long as you carry me, that thank you must come out of my mouth. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's the greatest person you owe thanks. Some of you never say thank you, Jesus, till you come to church. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, for life, for strength, for health. Thank you, Jesus. For salvation, for healing, for my mindset, the transformation happening. Thank you for the anointing you are bringing to my ministry. Thank you. Someone say thank you. Someone say thank you. When you are carried, give thanks. When you are carried, give thanks. When you are helped by God and helped by man, give thanks. Give thanks. Never take the help of God and the help of men for granted. Give thanks. Give thanks. I hope that man went back to look for those people to say thank you when he received his healings. Beware of times when your helpers do not need to help you again because God has taken you forward. Still don't forget them. If they were in your yesterday, they still deserve your thank you. Don't just say thank you because they are helping. No. It's been 10 years now. You don't need their help again. You are now a millionaire. That is the foolishness of many people. Helped by parents. Helped by preachers. Helped by destiny helpers. When God helps them to become, they do not have the fortitude to reach back to say thank you. Not to God, not to men. Some of you may need to think about people who did something yesterday in your life and obtain grace. 1,000, 100,000. What for? I've not heard from you for 15 years. Just to let you know that I remembered something you did before. They were about to carry me to a herbalist. And you said, no, come and keep me, keep this boy in my house. I will train the child. And he trained you for three years. Don't say only three years. And don't send them a text saying, many people have helped my life. You are one of them. That's an unwise way to say thank you. When you are saying thank you to people, don't do that. Don't say, many people have changed my life just to let you know you are one of them. Don't make the ability to carry you to the gate look insignificant. They didn't have the power to heal you. But if Peter did not see you, you would die a leper. Are we together? I know that the person did not have the power to pay your school fees, but he took you from the village to the city. I know you say he insulted you every day. I agree. Learn the lesson and don't do that to your children. But it's too small a reason to say he was a bad man. As much as he insulted you, you don't know the quarrel he had with his wife in the bedroom every day to send you back. And the man said, no. The child may be stupid, but leave him. Give him a chance. Two more years. That's how you got admission. Today you have become a great person. Don't look back and say, that useless uncle, may he even die. Make sure you find something after this teaching. Send it to him. He can even reply you and say, so you are now wise enough. You don't mind him. You just do what? 
Hmm. This is koinonia. Say, rise up and walk. The second miracle that happens to every man that happened to this man, building up to that wonderful one you call the miracle, was the ability to fuel the help in his life by lavishing gratitude and the ability to take responsibility to be humble to say every time I am helped is not weakness are we together now yes you are trusting God to start putting one block after another and God brings a blessed person who says you know what I want to do something for your family there is a three-bedroom flat here I'm doing it because I love you sincerely take now there are times that the wisdom you need to apply I know there are times that collecting certain things is like selling your birthright but this discussion is under normal spiritual conditions void of hatred and whatever it is when help comes receive it all help can compress time did you hear what I said help can compress time <laughs> Someone met me one time. I think he was tired of applying for a visa and they kept rejecting and the guy got angry. He believed that the spirit was stopping him. And so he stood for me to pray and I said, okay, just tell me, how are you doing it? And when I saw what he was doing, I said, you will not get this thing this way. That's not how it works. You see? And I looked at him and I knew he was not listening to me. Now, who is, who is at a loss? The guy wants, and he's, I, you could imagine in mind, I'm the one, I have a rev I know the spirit that, that stops me. Unfortunately, those to stamp the visa don't care what spirit is pursuing you. You will still keep going back. Look, help makes things easy. Learn this. The assignment of help is to make anything possible and then to make it easy. Did you get that? The assignment of help is to make things possible and to make things easy. There are people who would have come out of the cell if only they were willing to be helped. No, I will handle the situation myself. I, I know what to do. I'm an intelligent person. From detention, you go to prison and remain there. Joseph had to be helped. Jesus had to be helped. Are we together? Moses had to be helped. One time Moses was almost killing himself as a man of God because he was trying to counsel everybody. It was Jethro, his father-in-law, who called him and said, listen, you will worry yourself. These people are too many. He said, gather people, leaders over thousands, leaders over hundreds, anoint them and appoint them to handle these things. And you can now handle the weightier matters. Someone pray, send me help, oh God. Send me help again. Go ahead and pray. Send me help, oh God. Pray in one minute. The second miracle that happened to this man. Help. Hallelujah. The third miracle that happened to this man was that as he laid daily at the gate beautiful, something began to happen to his mind. I can tell you the fact that that a miracle began to happen to his mind was obvious because his faith was being built. He knew he could receive. Even though he did not know he could receive a miracle. Are we together now? That perception. I'm sure one day he kept looking at that beautiful. You see, this is the part of it that only the Holy Spirit can do. Only God knows what the Spirit began to do within that man. You don't have to die this way. Maybe in his small mind he was saying, I will keep begging for money. One day when I beg for money enough, I may build a house and at least move there and stop begging. Who knows? But I can tell you one thing. It is impossible to sit in the presence of a beautiful gate every day and nothing happens to your mind. It is impossible to sit in the presence of anointed people every day and nothing happens to you. Prayerful people every day and nothing happens. Prosperous people every day. Something happens when you come into the company of the great. Did you hear what I said? That gate's beautiful, you see. As inanimate as it was, it was doing something to that man. I believe that the Holy Spirit was using that to say your destiny can be this way. 
I'm sure the Holy Spirit taught him that do you know that gate did not build itself? One day, once upon a time, that bronze was once under the earth. It was not a gate. It took a man to build it. I'm sure the man was looking at his life. A gate is a passageway. I'm sure the man was looking at himself that one day people will be able to get to know God through me. It's a miracle when God brings